Okay, so this is a slightly short presentation. I mean, because part of the work has already been covered in a collaboration with Francois and uh, Godon did a stellar job presenting the work we have been doing together. So first of all, thanks again, for Professor and the organizers for the invitation. And here I will be talking about a slightly different angle, right? So it's a different angle. So risk from the three GPP perspective, we have heard a lot about risk. So I don't think I would have that much to add. So I will start by meaning, I, I'm trying to educate a little bit on what it would mean from a three GPP perspective. And then, I mean, we go back to risk. So what is actually going on there and what would be the ambitions of looking ahead? Okay, so I have structured this, as I said, as a very brief introduction and then the standardization in a nutshell, uh, and then moving to the risk, I mean, effectively what it, what it is going on or what it is not going on within 3GPP. So spoiler alert, and finally some key takeaways. So without further ado, uh, I am part of Nokia standards here. I mean, then we have been collaborating with Professor Francois and Links for a while. We have Goudon, as I said, who has done a great job presenting his work with us. He's a PhD, part of my team. We also have Andre. We also have Stefano here in the audience. And I mean, our main collaborators, I mean, more frequent ones, not exclusive ones, is Francois and Ku. I mean, uh, in the... Main reason I introduce this is because quite frequently people ask ourselves, I mean, what is Nokia standards about? I mean, uh, we are part of the same organization, so we are under the same umbrella as, I mean, the Bell Labs group, but we are effectively a different unit. Uh, and under that unit, you have, I mean, NSD stands for Nokia standards, different groups with different focuses. I mean, mostly on, on the 3GPP domain, but not only. And we happen to be part here in, in France, of a radio interface and access group. There's another group also represented in France. That one looks into architecture aspects mostly. And I mean, the two teams that we have from REAG, uh, they cover more than 20 researchers and delegates. So you have I mean, a wider pool of people to interact than the ones that you have seen here. So pr probably this is one interesting slide to take a look at and what it starts to mean like to do work in stand standardizations and cellular innovation in general. So this flywheel here try to represent, I mean, the first inner circle, I mean, spectrum, right? I mean, spectrum is the heart of the work we do. It was mentioned by our colleague from Orange. If you don't have spectrum, you don't have radio, end of the story, game over. And this cycle here repeats, just move a little bit, yeah. Uh, you start identifying the spectrum, then you harmonize, then you auction, then you finally have the allocations, and then you can implement your system. So if we move clockwise. Now, if you look at the wheel, I mean, the outer wheel, I mean, uh, we're moving outside, right? I mean, you start with a vision, from the vision, you do the research, and from the research, you standardize, then finally you commercialize. Personally, we are not involved in any of those, in the commercialization phase. Uh, I have been doing, like myself, from all the way from spectrum regulation all the way to standardization. But I'm trying to zoom in and focus here on the research and innovations and standardization parts, right? So because moving towards 3GPP. And in the outer circle, what you see is, I mean, if we now move counterclockwise, right? I mean, we started with 5G, so that's out there. It's, I mean, commercial products. Then there's a continuation, right? You have 5G advanced, the evolution of 5G. I mean, it started with release 18. And then we are beginning to talk now in 2024, I mean, even within standardization or slash pre-standardization, uh, 6G, right? So, <clears throat> and then, as I said, I mean, then the blue, we are just representing the different phases and then it, they can represent, I mean, uh, let's say here, yeah, sensing and communication and then energy efficiency and aspects that we have been touching upon. So, so all those things, and here is this reality, right? So you can think of mobile broadband, uh, NTN and drones, and then you know, ultra reliable communications. But the, maybe the, the interesting thing that I mean to highlight again when we're talking about standardization is that our approach typically starts hey, with a problem, right? What we are doing is it addressing a real world issue? Is there practical interest? And practical means is a customer interested? I mean, would it make the life of a customer private or CSP easier, better? So is there value? Then of course we we love that's the part that we all love, right? I mean, I have this great idea, eureka moments like, wow, I mean, it's beautiful. Let, let's put this into good use. 
But of course, when you start to think about standardization, that, that someone actually needs to build this, sell this, and make a profit, then uh, you, you need to assess the pain versus gain, right? I think that stands to reason. And then if there's enough gain, well, then it's worth the pain of, I mean, going through patents, standardizing. But standardization itself doesn't happen by magic, right? So, I mean, you may have a great idea. There's plenty of smart people around. They also have their own great ideas. So you have to convince them, right? So you have to push your ideas through the so-called T-Docs. So that's specifically for 3GPP. And then finally, when you get to this point, I mean, if everybody's convinced, you have moved the needle, it made it to the specs. Of course, there's still no guarantee that it will actually be built and commercialized, but it's a good indication, right? That's a good indication. That was not meant to be the end of the presentation. I think there's an issue with the file. Yeah. At first I thought it was my fault, but that doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> I think it's minor things. You have an image, Shaman? Oh, uh, no. I mean, I generated a PDF. Uh, uh, it was still here. Uh, uh, so, you yeah, find yeah, that one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and I can use this, no problem. I just have to reboot everything here, I guess. That's confirmed. What was the number of petition numbers? And here, hopefully. Now, are you on? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. have covered this one already. As I said, it was not meant to be the end of the presentation. And then I go a little bit more into 3GPP territory, right? What does it actually mean to standardize? And the whole reason I'm, I mean, pointing this out is not to simply, hey, like here's a tutorial on 3GPP, but it's important to understand how the machinery actually works so that you have a proper strategy, I mean, to push the ideas in. So 3GPP, I mean, uh, I like to look at this as a, a bazaar, right? I mean, not in the French connotation, it's just that there are way too many members and it works based on consensus. And the idea is that the more people looking into something, the less likely, I mean, that bug, but I, unidentified bugs will remain. It's no guarantee, but that's the principle. So you have R&D institutions, I mean, companies, but then I highlighted here on the left side, like the main ones. So, I mean, or the bigger ones, if you will, right? So you have representations, I mean, from the customers, the CSPs, the traditional ones. So you have vendors like Nokia, uh, and then you have chipset manufacturers, Qualcomm, and then you also have device manufacturers. An example, Samsung. It stands to reason that sometimes, and more frequently than not, uh, the interests are not fully aligned. So that's why you really need to get everybody in the same room very, very many, many times. And in that sense, sometimes it can actually approach the French connotation of a bazaar, right? And you can imagine how easy it is to get six, I mean, researchers from 600 members to agree on, on a way forward. But then forgetting all this, I mean, there is the PCG, which is the coordination group, I mean, but that's more admin stuff. The actual work happens within the technical specification groups. And we have three main technical specification groups. The team that we are part of here in France uh, is dealing mostly with the TSG RAN, so the radio access network. We also have colleagues here in France that deal with, I mean, SA aspects, so service system, and um, it's actually the glue that brings everything together. But the beef, the part that you normally think, like oh, radio, wireless, that's TSG RAN, right? And then the first one is, I mean, the core of the network and the SIM cards and what happens with the terminals. I move next, just to provide a now zoom in a bit further. Within the RAN aspect, you have the work groups, and the work groups are then really, really where work gets done, right? I mean, you organize the meetings. I mean, there is one happening starting next week. I'll talk a little bit about that one. Uh, and then there's, I mean, the teams here, 
we mostly focus on brand one aspects. So that's the Paris team to core competence, not exclusively, but they, they focus mostly on that. Stefano, my colleague here, is in charge of that team. Uh, I'm in charge of the Paris one team. I mean, we mostly focus on the protocols. So rate layer two, rate layer three. Uh, from the radio point of view. Uh, and then I also happen to have now one person working on rent three aspects, and we also have rent four and rent five. Rent four and rent five, I mean, it's, it's more even rent four is, I mean, when once something is mature, it goes to rent four. I must say that there is more limited for pure research once you approach, I mean, rent four and four, rent five. But that is not to say that there isn't uh, research going on there. I mean, the example that my colleague from Orange mentioned about, hey, Spectrum and coexistence, I mean, the masks, that would be something that Rand Ford would address, right? So ju just to give an example. Whereas, I mean, the proper air interface design and the protocols that control it, I mean, and protocols that you would need to control the risk, for instance, would be material for Rand 1 and Rand 2. And maybe last but not, well, not yet the last thing about 3GPP, it's just to, I mean, uh, clarify that 3GPP does operate, I mean, uh, using releases, but the releases, they are not big bangs or everything happens at once, right? I mean, uh, usually you have releases running in parallel and the different work groups, the timelines from them are not fully synchronized because some things have to start before. Say you're thinking of use cases, right? Use cases is something that SA groups look into. So they usually start in advance. Uh, right now, we are working on release 19. That's the ongoing release. Uh, but it, we typically work into the previous one and the upcoming one. So planning for the next release and, yeah, I mean, fixing bugs, mistakes from the previous release. So the, the current active release is release uh, 19, but release 18 is not yet fully closed. So just to give you, uh, and now this is the last thing about 3GPP. How do we try to bring order to this chaos, right? I mean, or the many different ideas and how to make things actually happen in a bit structured manner. Well, usually you have study items. Once you have identified a topic that gains sufficient momentum and there's enough people interested in the industry, in the ecosystem, if you promote it well, then you might make the case and you end up with a study item. The study item is characterized by the study item description. It says, here are the objectives, here's what we plan to do, here's the timeline, you're gonna get this, and the output is typically in fact to a technical report. That's not specification, it's a technical report, it's not normative, but it forms the basis for future work. Uh, and then you can either impact, create a new technical report or impact an existing one. The conclusions of such a study item, then they get mapped to a work item, right? I mean, that's where actually standardization normative work starts. So keep this in mind because this is going to be relevant for, for I mean, um, RIS and then Isaac, for instance. Also, key thing, as I said, to keep in mind is that we have to prioritize. There is not enough airtime in 3GPP. There is not enough, I mean, researchers to tackle all topics at once. So it's not just a matter of like, oh, I, I like or I don't like this. It's about like, well, I have to prioritize finite resources, right? And then, of course, due focus, as I said, has to be on features that have commercial potential, right? So, and there is an additional layer. Some things go into the specs, and that's what I meant that being standardized is no guarantee that will actually be manufactured or, I mean, commercialized, because some things are mandatory. You really have to implement them to have a 5G and our system or a 6G system, and some things are optional features. They're there, but they're on paper, if you will. So, cutting to the chase, RIS in 3GPP. Uh, maybe some of you have seen this before. Uh, within 3GPP, RIS is typically, I mean, not exclusively, but typically seen as a relaying technology, right? Of course, you can claim no, but there's the massive MIMO aspect as well, but, but it happens that it is typ typically seen as a relaying technology. The unfortunate thing is that relaying technologies have a bad threat in 3GPP. I mean, they, they got standardized, I mean, work has been done, but no commercial traction. I mean, maybe you can blame our CSP colleagues. I mean, but, but it's reality, right? I mean, it's they don't usually see the use case or concrete need for that. And then without going into the details, right? I mean, but then you can say there's two different forms of, I mean, a relaying. I mean, one is decoding forward. You probably know this very well. 
that one materialized in release 16. Uh, then we also had the more traditional simpler that amplify and forward. That one actually took place, I mean, continuation, right? I mean, the initial work was in release 10, but release 17, then people, the issue of control is a key issue, like who controls what? So then you have this network controlled repeaters. That is a topic from release 18. And during the release 19 discussions, Docomo, for instance, said like, yeah, we like the topic, we like RIS, it's interesting, but we actually see this as, I mean, this reflect and forward or reform and forward uh, as a special type of a network control repeater. So that, that was the initial proposal. Long story very short, I mean, here's a summary. I mean, this is public. Uh, there were, I mean, as usual, a spectrum of different views. So some companies, they had, especially the top two ones, I mean, favorable views. They had prototypes uh, and they had dutifully listed things that would impact the standards and things that should be studied and investigated to move forward. Uh, whereas most companies were either neutral or did not say anything, right? And then I remember, like, it's not listed here, but one CSP was very vocal and saying, like, no, 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 we don't want it. Like, we don't want it. Like, we see no point. It, uh, it was a German one. I, I won't say the name. Um, and then bottom line, right? I mean, what actually happened is that RIS, although it was considered, it is not part of release 19. It's out. It's out. Okay? As I said, I mean, the... The, the potential impact was addressed. It's listed. It's captured, right? I mean, I have included, so when you start looking codes like this throughout the presentation, links to 3GPP material. Uh, it's That's one of the things that we normally do, this detective work. I mean, how to find which document, because the numbering, the scheme is somewhat cryptic for someone outside of 3GPP. How would I know that the release 19 workshop summary is 230488, right? I mean, this is the, the, the detective work. So you really have to be following to know where to find stuff. But I mean, that is not to say that there's absolutely nothing in release 19. But we have heard today, right, about Isaac and RIS. Uh, there is indeed, I mean, a study, two study items actually, that ran one lad. That's why I said it's important to understand how 3GPP works. So it's physical layer. Ran one is leading this. There is a work plan. I have included this. They normally don't endorse, but if you open that document, you'll see a timeline and what is planned. I encourage you to do this offline and, and read. Uh, and the two study items are those. So they will study the channel model for Isaac in NR. So we're still talking about 5G. Uh, and the meeting, this is as fresh as it gets. The meeting starts next week in Athens. So th this is really fresh documentation. And the other one will start in April, has not yet started, but you have the study item description that I mentioned. So you will look into this and find the objectives. I, I included a brief spoiler. I mean, I won't be reading this through, I mean, because it will just be boring. Uh, but I mean, things that I would like to highlight. It's listing the use cases that are currently on the table for discussions for Isaac and like the frequencies of interest, right? So. And then it says, identify the scenarios and probably, well, let's see if the pointer still works. It won't work, but uh, if you read the fine channel modeling details for sensing using 38901. So that one, if you Google, you'll find it, 38901. It's the channel model. That one is likely to get updated. So keep an eye on this one. I mean, if you're interested in Isaac and RISC, and I gather you are, right? Otherwise, why would you be here? And then, the other one is related. I mean, it's also addressing 38901. It's giving you a further clue of where the focus is. This golden band, like the main band of interest for 3GPP, now also looking into 6G, 7 to 24. So we do things stepwise. Okay, let's study the study things. Start with the channel. Do we have a good channel representation for RISC, for Isaac? Yes, no. What are the changes? Let's try to keep things, I mean, um, Continuous in the frequency domain, so there is no, I mean, unless there's a really, really good reason to, to break the continuity. Uh, and then I also find that no two quite interesting because mathematical and theoretical aspects, if any, can still be studied. So 3GPP is saying, hey, we, we care about this. This is relevant, uh, especially because measurements are not yet available or publicly, publicly available. And the, the work on that will start in Q3, so this year. So that's giving you a hint of what's ahead. So not to take too much time, I mean, maybe just to, I included a few links for further reading in case you're interested. So all public material. 
And I will now jump to, I mean, the key takeaways. I mean, what I would really like you to retain from this relatively short talk. So you can think of us, I mean, the standardization people, I mean, we're also researchers, so we, we like the research, uh, but we, you can see us as real estate agents, right? I mean, at least in the standardization domain. So we have this deep, I mean, 3GPP market, I mean, as I said, beyond 3GPP, but let's, let's focus on 3GPP for the time being, expertise. So we know what the trends are. We know, I mean, hey, you have a good idea. What would be a good home for that idea in the specs or how to get there, right? So this is a good way to, to work. And all, of course, I mean, it's a two-way street. Discussion with academia as well provides us insight. And this is something that I mentioned in the previous talk. Like, hmm, we see that there's a trend, but there's no modeling. So to gain additional insight, similar to the work that we have been doing with Francois and Goudon, what is actually the potential? If we go all the way and standardize this, what can we actually expect? I mean, will there be a performance benefit? For indoor scenarios, for outdoor scenarios, let's try to evaluate without going for full-blown simulations because those take a lot of time. And if you want to collaborate with us, there are different collaboration frameworks, CIFRE, a PhD example, but then there are UE pro uh, European Union projects and ANR, secondments, and then via links, I mean, more informally lightweight, we can date before we marry. Uh, and then, well, second key takeaway, well, it is still a very hot topic, but it's out of release time soon, right? So that also means that it's very unlikely, unlikely to be part of 5G Advanced at all because the next release 19 and once we reach release 20, so I'm getting a little bit into the next slide, then we are going into 6G territory. So it's out. I mean, I wouldn't really bet the house on risk in, in 5G Advanced. So on the other point, Isaac plus risk, as we also have heard today, I think it's an interesting angle of attack because formally the study items are about um, Isaac and do focus, as I said, on the bands that matter the most within 3GPP. So I don't want to discourage, but if you go very high up in, in the spectrum, it's less likely that it will get prioritized. And then finally, I mean, uh, as was stated before, I mean, if you look up the web, you'll find different timelines. I mean, I took this one from HexX2, relatively recent deliverable. It's, I mean, by the way, I'm also part of that. Uh, it's, it's all public, but you'll see the two dimensions, right? I mean, but um, for, for now, I'm just focusing on the upper parts of the 3GPP. 6G starts in release 20, not normative work, but study items will be there. And if you don't get, I mean, Isaac or RIS as one of the study items in release 20, it basically means that it will not be a day one feature for 6G. It might come later. It might be 6G phase two, it might be 7G, but I mean, the time, so if I pick up on what was said previously, yes, it is early for standardization. And at the same time, it is not, right? Because 2025 is just around the corner. So the work to, if you're serious about getting this into the specs, should have started, right? Or should start as soon as possible. And with that, I mean, hopefully I managed to convey like the pre-GPP angle when it comes to risk. There's the ORAN possibility as well. Won't go into that. But yeah, uh, open for a few questions. I don't know if, how well I did in terms of timing. Thank you. Thank you, Luis, for a very clear and excellent talk, actually. I understand the whole thing. So the uh, first question I have is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, RIS has been put a little bit on hold. And we have always seen, like, uh, uh, with the MIMO, with the, uh, with the OFDMA, you know, we, we always seen like this that something is talked about in one generation and it is only in the next generation that it, it matures. Mm -hmm. So do you think it is going to be the same fate for uh, RES, as you mentioned? And uh, the real question is why uh, at sea they have set up these industry specification groups, which are quite active. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I can only share now what I consider to be my personal opinion, right, when it comes, because predicting the future is very hard. 
But given the challenge that we have heard, for instance, from I mean, our, the CSP side and our colleagues from NAC, right? And there, there's still lots of work to be done to mature the technology and to prove the use case. I personally do not think it is going to be a day one feature for 6G. That's my view. Doesn't exclude it from the I mean, second phase or later down the road, which is not necessarily a bad thing, right? And it could also be that there might not be a great feature like for CSPs after all to be seen, but it doesn't preclude, I mean, it for indoor networks, right? Or for private customers, it's a completely different game. So there is a possibility there. And for Etsy and I mean, ORAN and any other, right? I mean, that's just the way the standardization work goes. I mean, I zoomed in through GPP. I mean, I also included, I mean, ITU, but those things are all happening as part of the same ecosystem. So it's a very large machinery that's moving. And at a certain point in time, and that's typically the, I mean, not so nice role of 3GPP, someone has to say like, this is it, right? I mean, this is what defines, I mean, the objectives and this is going to get included. Something has to be out and something has to be in. But until that point, it's only great that there are many, many different groups coming up with ideas. I mean, outside the industry, academia, so that, that's usually how the process goes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. It's a uh, very nice presentation, straight to the point. Uh, I wanted to uh, maybe for you to expand on your quick comment that uh, if it's a higher spectrum, then it's likely to not be prioritized. Um, what is your feeling on uh, the work uh, that's going on in free GPP in term, with regards to millimeter wave and uh, uh, millimeter wave systems and um, such? Yeah, I mean, as you know, I mean, it's not only going on, but it has also concluded, right? I mean, millimeter wave was standardized as a key band for NR, for 5G, right? But it's, again, not necessarily, I mean, of course, there's physics, right? I mean, we, we can't change that. I mean, coverage, I mean, goes with the, I mean, as you go up, I mean, it gets worse. But then their business dimension, it simply did not gain momentum as expected, so... Was it too early? Was it too late? Or will will we see? It's hard to predict, right? I mean, but the fact is, I mean, the work started. It had a clear start, clear end. Like the system was built. It can be deployed. It was actually deployed, but it just simply did not enjoy like huge market uptake. It's just a fact. I think what I was also getting at is, um, is there any chance that um, work groups such as ISAC can influence that and push forward the millimeter wave spectrum? I, I mean, uh, now, now again, sharing what I consider to be my personal view, right? And also based on previous experience. If you think of radars, right? I mean, most radars work, I mean, uh, on higher frequencies and then you have more spec from there. You have, th that will give you higher accuracy in terms of speed, velocity. So it might be that this is actually the thing that makes the deal for millimeter wave, right? I mean, I mean I, if you ask me myself, I believe in it, right? It, it's different enough. Right? It's something that goes beyond communication. But is it the market ripe for that? And what is the right market for that? Then, then let's see. Thank you.